Okay, so now our character has full facial enhanced sprite libraries, so what we need to do next is make sure that it will animate properly by rigging the joints. You'll see that when I select and rotate these arm sections here, the result is not bad because I've already refined the pivot points for the arm, represented by the small red dots at the end of the joints. Now I'm going to skip over to the character's left arm, and I'll show you what the rotation results will typically look like before refinement. As you can see, they're nothing like what I want. To see why they're rotating this way, take a closer look at what they're rotating around. This small red dot here indicates the pivot point for limb rotation. If I move that pivot point to the top of the upper arm like it should be, you'll see that the rotation results are much better. I'll do the same thing on the forearm here. I'll move the red pivot point to the top of the forearm, and make sure it's relatively in the middle. Then I'll move it over to connect with the upper arm and test the results. Now when I bend the arm, the elbow has kind of a double bump thing going on, which is because the forearm is not aligned properly. I'll move the forearm up a bit and adjust the pivot point a little higher. Essentially what you want to achieve is a rounded elbow so there are no edges jutting out during animation. This is why it's a good idea when you're creating your character to have well-rounded edges for all of your limbs. Now hands are a bit different in that they actually have three important points along with feet, upper torso, and head. I'll refine my pivot point for the wrist here first, and then toggle the show hide connection points in the top toolbar. Now you'll see three points, one green, one yellow, and one red. We know the red one is for pivot point, but what about the other ones? Well, the green one is essentially the connection point for the child limb, while the yellow is the connection point for the parent limb. So essentially what I want to do is have these line up at the point where the two limbs connect. Look what happens if I set the green connection point a little above center, and then select Snap Connection Point from the top toolbar. The hand will automatically move down approximately that same distance, because the green dot was commanded to connect with its parent, the yellow dot. You can see that if I repeat the same process to the left side, the hand will move that approximate distance to the right. For now, let's just return the connection points to their proper place. Because they are correctly positioned now, if I want to replace them, the new incoming hands will automatically align themselves to those points. Let's test it out by entering in some Digidude hands. When I double click to import those in now, they will align themselves directly to those connection points for a good result. I'm going to do the same thing here on the feet now. You can adjust the pivot and connection points accordingly for each unique character. The next thing you'll need to refine is your character layers. This character's feet originally imported like this, below the character's cap. The results don't really look ideal in this case, so for this particular character, I want to move the feet up on the limb hierarchy to the right. I can do that by simply clicking the up arrow to move that body part up. Now you'll see that it will appear above the cap, and the rotation result will look pretty good. Of course, each individual character will have different feet, and you may want to layer differently on your own. I'll just move over to the character's left foot and do the same thing. The rotation result will look a lot better on this particular character when the foot is above the cap on the hierarchy. Now this character is front facing, but we can also make it easy to do side motions as well. This depends on the particular character, but for this guy the result should be okay. The main thing you need to do to make your character compatible with side facing motions as well is to load in different sprite elements from your character's left foot like I'm doing here. Now pay attention to the order in which you load these as it's very important. I want to load three feet altogether, with the side facing foot first, which will then be assigned the default side motion foot as the third spot in the sprite library. Next will be the front facing foot, so just load that in and adjust it to a front facing position. This one needs to be resized a little bit as well, so I can simply do that by selecting and dragging the transform box. The last one to load in will be the default foot. Since this is a front facing character by default, I'll also load in another front facing foot. Once that's aligned and everything, you can see that when I quickly go through the sprite library that each element has a different foot position. What I'll do now is switch up to the side pose by selecting the button in the top toolbar. Once I've done that, then you'll see that my foot position gets a little bit messed up. What I'll do is just adjust the side facing foot here to its proper position, but leave the other ones, just so you can see what effect it will have. 
you can see that even though I adjusted the side facing foot, when I go into stage mode, the foot is still messed up. This is because I exited while my character had a side profile, and I didn't adjust the default foot to the correct position. So now when I go into Composer and select Front Pose, then return to Stage Mode, you'll see that my character has the correct foot position. What I'll do quickly here is apply a few puppeteering motions to my character. The first two here are front facing motions, so as you can see my character's left foot remains facing outward. However, since I modified the left foot library, my character can also do side facing motions as well, as you can see demonstrated here. It may not look flawless as character design is normally intended to focus on a single profile, but it does the job. Here, I'm just demonstrating the different facial puppeteering capabilities of this character, now that he has his facial sprite library. Of course, you can also manually adjust this with the sprite editor in stage mode. Lastly, I'll enter in a text-to-speech monologue here. Once I've finished, my character will use his lip-syncing library to form the mouth shapes for all the individual words. Well, there you have it. Follow those steps and you'll be creating your own characters in no time.